Remember we were talking about... The, I remember nothing! The re-releasing of old films? Yes. One of the oldies but goodies that's dropping as we speak in, in theaters in India? Mm. Gangs of Wasseper. Mm. I was thinking of doing a, a parody film, like a Mel Brooks style version of that film, and I'd call it Wangs of Gossiper. Josh! Welcome back to our stupid directs of Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you to everybody who supports on Patreon. Follow us to the guns. Give a like button. Hey, what are those guys gossiping about? Wangs. Nope, still not funny. Uh, today we got a, uh, what are we doing, Rick? I don't know. Yeah, same. Oh, yeah, we got a best ever food review channel. Oh, cool. But this is, it's Indian food, but it's actually in London that he has. It's poor man's curry versus rich man's curry. In London? Actually, it's the national food of London. Or Great Britain, one of the two. Yeah, it's know. the same. Uh, just because there's a lot of Indians there. For so no the, particular reason. So the national food of Great Britain is Indian food. What other food would it be? All their other food is... So give them back their jewel. <laughs> Call Rithik. Go steal it. <laughs> He's done it twice. <laughs> um, anyways, I love this channel. I, yeah. He's... he's Excellent. What? what? Connect to the internet. What the heck? This is a premium curry. It costs over a thousand dollars. That was beautifully stupid. constructed by Chef Atul okay. here at Kanishka Restaurant in London. Today I'm on a mission to explore the unlikely over world of British yes. curry at three different places with three different price tags. I know we have a lot of stupid babies in London. How yeah. does the Due curry to compare to uh, UK? UK? And yeah. by the end of this video, you'll see the most expensive curry that money can buy. So what goes into making a thousand pound curry? But first, one of the cheapest curries you'll find pounds. in one of the most expensive cities in the world. It starts with a ladle full of oil, chopped onions, and green chilies. Right now we're at the oh. Indian YMCA. I've never heard of an Indian YMCA, but I have heard of a YMCA. In the <laughs> USA, it's just a gym. But here it's yeah. very different. The it's chef builds its signature young taste Christian with star meats, mace, cinnamon, bay leaves, cloves, cardamom, cumin, and nutmeg. This is YMCA Indian Student Hostel London. This is started in the year 1990. Now it's more than 105 years. We um, are here to provide subsidized uh, accommodation and excellent God, he has food. A British Voice. for international students for a very, very low cost. But where are the subsidies well coming said. from? Next, diced tomato, garlic ginger paste, coriander powder, chili powder, turmeric powder, and garam masala are added. We have a trading organization, mm -hmm. which is a hotel, mm -hmm. and they sort of provide the funding for us to keep the costs low for the charity. Cubes of lamb join the pan with a mm. cup of water. From here, the chef lets it simmer, soaking up all those flavors. The British developed a deep appreciation for Indian food during their 89 yeah, I'm years sure of they colonial did. rule in India. They These days, Indian food is valuable. Yeah. Hey, so it in surprises India. me to hear Sam say it is very difficult to get the Indian food in the in London. It is. Yeah. It's it's yeah. not just about Indian food. It's about a home cooked meal. Exactly. You go to some Indian restaurant that we like to call Asian restaurants, and the food is sort of catered towards the English or the British taste. Sure. What's wrong with that? It's a bit <laughs> bland. Uh -huh. It could be a bit what? bland. What? Bland so British food. We have food? chefs from different parts of India. Sure. We have interactions with the students, find out what they like, and they tend to give it that little subtle touches that will sort of make them feel like it's butter a home cooked meal. Butter chicken, tandoori chicken, fresh coriander leaves, curry leaves, and half a tablespoon chicken, of salt lie. into the pan. He lets it simmer a bit longer before confidently sending it to the dining hall. Mm. <laughs> Seema, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Meet Seema. This gifted British Indian was a chef de partie at various Gordon Ramsay oh. restaurants. Now wow. she's a cherished food content creator. In Indian culture, food is such a prevalent and important factor that kind of brings everyone together. My mom, she always made <laughs> Indian food growing up. We her name is Seema Gets night. Baked. We never had leftovers. We never had food. Gets baked. We never had takeaway. So because of that, it kind of made me realize how important food was to me and getting, kind of gave me my love for cooking. In general, Indian food in London, is it expensive? I guess it really just depends where you're going. London okay. itself is quite expensive. Right. If you're going on the outskirts of London, it will definitely be a lot cheaper. Here I'm told that if you came in for lunch and you got lamb curry, maybe some rice, it's going to be under 10 pounds. Is that pretty good? Yeah, 10 pounds is great, especially lambs is expensive meat. You know, That's you're probably getting good. a big portion Eight of bucks? it. So 10 pounds is fantastic. I say we give it a shot. Yes. 
You can tell it's really, really good when it has like this oil on the top here. That's it looks good. Like well if it was 10 curry, pounds, it would be more like 12 If we were in bucks. India right now, would yeah. we be eating with our hands? or would we Yeah, eating? I would eat all of this with my hands. I'd be like, I don't even know how to eat this with a spoon, to be honest. Oh, okay. You should just eat however you normally eat. Yeah. So this Can't is tell you how many times in Johnny really I have dinner. to make. And cheese flour, utensils. Egg, milk, sugar, salt, oil, and water. Join hands in the making of paratha. To get the dough mm, so thick and to make it so thin is such a skill to do. And it's interesting when they make it, like they don't write down how yes. to make it. Slap have, just like that man, I've made paratha before. Feel. Yeah, the recipe has to be in your heart. Yeah, it And does. maybe a little in your yeah. DNA. He then gathers and coils Ooh. the dough like a turban before running it over with a rolling pin. A short trip to the flat top with multiple oil drizzles turns this flatbread brown and crispy. Last, but perhaps the most crucial, the paratha smash. Yeah, yeah. smash that paratha. That is crucial. Oh, oh mama. Mm. Mm hmm. Oh, I love pranta so much. Mm -hmm. How can you flaky not? And layered. The flavors are outstanding. It's oh. spicy and full of spices. Oh my. The lamb has a nice lamby uh, taste. Uh, it tastes like lamb. I'm so bad at describing Indian food <laughs> because oftentimes there might be 12 it's, or 24 spices. It's exactly. In it's sure, hard. I, say, oh, I taste the chili powder and the turmeric is in there. And I was so is just every talking about spice. this with Alexis. So how do you describe Indian food? I would say. This is very well spiced, but it's not spicy. You can get, definitely taste the whole spice. I'll be like the judge the of that. And the cinnamon, <laughs> which give it more of like a earthy kind of flavor into it, as well as the, the main spice, which is like chili powder, ground coriander, ground cumin. And I think that's quite difficult. It's impossible for an American palate to de delineate. This is our first differentiation location. But not here, we're we don't know. We don't know what those things are. I do. Later today, do I'll be trying a curry 100 times more expensive than this. But first, a very controversial curry. One that's both loved and hated. It was invented, not in India, but right here in the United Kingdom. I'm Enjoy. talking about chicken tikka masala. masala. Yes. But before that, a quick word from the sponsor of this video, BetterHelp. Let's talk about breaking the stigma around therapy. We all know that mental health is just as important as physical health. Prove trying it. to find help can still be really scary. Many of us hesitate to reach out because of the misconceptions surrounding therapy. But it's time to change the narrative. Nice. Bring sign up to receive a special discount. I'm D'Angelo Russell. Hi, D'Angelo. Basketball player, point guard. How are you? Father. I don't know. On your first month are of therapy. You? So head on over to betterhelp.com slash best ever food These to start online your journey today. Mental now, health places are awesome. Yeah. To learn more about this British Indian dish, we've come here to Thai Apps. This restaurant is a 50 year old oh. family business that's earned its reputation for its pure Pakistani flavor that's hard to find in London. My dad used to make his one pot of curry. At first, people were struggling with the spices, and people used God, to tell my dad, to say, dial it down. This is in London, yeah. I know. Yeah. My dad said, I'd rather stop. A man of integrity. Yeah. Greeting us today, Alim, the second generation owner of Thai Apps. In coming here, is, I thought there was just Indian food, but actually, I'm told this is British Indian food that you'll find all over London. It is very difficult to get the Indian food in the. It in is London. very difficult. What is the difference to you between Indian and British Indian? British food, with its focus on simplicity and natural flavors, contrasts sharply. That was spice rich polite. complexity. Beans and it's so it's simplicity and natural British flavors. Indian you mean bland? To the British palate, <laughs> which may mean fewer bold spices. Or as Sandeep describes, it's a bit bland. There you go! British Indian restaurants, they do shortcuts. They use spice in a jar, canned, and they just cheat. But us here, we're, we're keeping it real. Despite Alim's pride in authentic Pakistani flavors, is one of the most popular dishes at Tayeb's is a dish that was invented here in the United Kingdom. It was not on our menu, but due to popular demand, we caved. You caved? It's like caved. Italian restaurants with a fettuccine Alfredo. That's masala. not Italian. Oh, yeah. You know I've been, been to Olive Garden. Garden. I think it was in Glasgow. The Scott Miles making chicken tikka, which is just chicken, just grilled, basically. Chicken tikka. Cubes of chicken mm. breast are marinated with a mix of chili, That's garlic, ginger, your mom ginger, my chicken lemon tikka. juice, Ooh. homemade spice, coriander, oil, and yogurt. Then they're skewered and plopped on the grill. I skewered your mom. Good lord. Um, someone came in, I think someone who British came in, said we wanted more sauce in it. So he added a tin of tomato soup, which made it a lot more creamier, tomatoier, a lot less spicy. He gave it back, and the man was absolutely obsessed with it. There's Couldn't get enough British of it. British pronunciations I love. And I think tomato. that's actually like, one of the national dishes vitamin. of England. So yeah. the vitamin C. Have caved. We caved. Their standards here allow no canned tomato sauce. Fresh tomatoes, onions, and plenty of oil go into a pot, where the chef adds garlic ginger paste, chili oh. powder, turmeric, 
powder and Some of the best smelling stuff on the earth, well, garlic ginger based. Everything oh. into a smooth, vibrant orange soup. If you go to India now, can you find it on menus there? Yeah, you can now. It's on the coast over. That's wild. Fans of indo Paki cuisine might notice the absence of curry leaves, coconut milk, and the usual whole dried spices in this dish. Are there other Absolutely Pakistani or Indian that. recipes that have been adapted in this way to suit the local palate? That's just the one. Just the one? Yeah. Amazing. The wild. chicken tikka joins the sauce, and together they jump into a fiery vessel. Uh, please, dish yourself first. Oh, oh no, nice. you're my right guest. Yeah, okay, let me do you. I accept. <laughs> I get his chicken towel. Take Big towel, succulent but it looks pieces delicious. of chicken. Yeah. And lots of sauce. We've got some butter naan right here. Yeah, it looks so mm. buttery. Oh my god. Here, the naan is crafted from a dough blend of flour, water, yeast, sugar, and sometimes Steam yogurt is making milk. your naan. Naan is typically cooked in a clay <laughs> oven, where the dough clings to the walls and bakes to golden brown puffy perfection. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Will I be disappointed? Will I be naan by away? Steve? Will I be saddened? Will That's I be nonsense. Mm -hmm. mm. The flavors. Not a ton of spices, yeah. very tomatoey, mm. and pretty heavy, pretty oily. And that's it. No spiciness. You know what's the difference the between spices, a Korean and an Indian place? The tomato. Yeah. One it's is very, very pho profit, curry. the other one is it non profit. It's that like, whisper <laughs> of like a traditional Indian curry. Wow, I love the racist. idea that an Indian street food vendor went up to my ear and whispered, Masala. <laughs> I was like, is the masala in the room with me now? But it's still really delicious. It's very, very tomatoey. I actually really like the char of the chicken as well. But, but, yeah, what, a what about the, the char tomatoey flavor sauce? From it being roasted over the charcoal. It's so probably overall, loaded like with it. vitamins. There's something satisfying about it, but then there's also something that's missing. The spice. The spice. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, of all the Indian food, I like my mom's the best. But when I'm going to a restaurant where I, I want to have common, loads huh? of friends be happy, somewhere like this is absolutely perfect. It's like a gateway Indian dish. If you're worried that Indian food is going to be too spicy, mm. It's a great meal, way to huh? kind of get used to it. And then you can start delving into like the really spicy stuff. It was very nice to try both these meals with you and to get your perspective. Yeah. That said, from here, we are parting ways. From here, I'm Those headed to a restaurant that's serving a curry that costs a thousand pounds. God. Can you even imagine what it could be? Is it like a thousand curries? I think they found an endangered animal. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kanishka, in their words, offers a modern interpretation of dishes from northeastern India a in a sophisticated Indian dining restaurant. room. So what we call fine dining Indian here is whatever I create based on the ingredients I get here, however, using my own techniques and spices. We definitely have lobster on the menu. We also have venison. We use truffle from time to time. We sell That's our three course the, lunch the menu for 45 pounds, but we also sell our tasting menu paired with wines for 250 pounds. The captain here is Chef Atul, the first Indian chef to earn a Michelin star. Now he has two. Today you're taking on the challenge of making a curry that costs a yeah. thousand pounds. Star Indian restaurant when we in came York. to you with this challenge, why'd you accept it? Why'd you want to take this on? I'm always up for a challenge. We are not taught no in India. We are taught yes. Before you finish your sentence, it's a yes, we can. That's hospitality for us. Do we, you think when this comes out uh, that there will be haters Malayalam out there, that there will be people who say Indian food, food is, is meant to be humble, yes, the it's not meant to be not. this right. premium, high-end, inaccessible... At Peacock... Ah! Made of we didn't need an ad for Peacock. People love Friday night super expensive food. I mean, what would you say to people who have that point well, of view? Well, you know, you're right, but that's for every cuisine. You know, French cuisine can also be very humble and sweet and nice and easy, and you have to pay very sure. little money for it. But French cuisine is also massively elevated, where a thousand pound a dish would be actually nothing. So in just a moment, you're going to be making this 1,000 pound curry. Yeah, I would love so if you could show us some of the ingredients. I was just going to say, would you ever do that? No. If I was a billionaire, I'm not going to spend that much money on a meal. Do you want to come in and try it? You don't have to pay for it? black cardamom. Sure, but and I'm not paying it. So I've just seared the lobster and left it in spice butter where it'll be poaching. Uh, my aim is to keep the temperature of the lobster below 55 degrees centigrade so it's just nicely congealed. But just you wait lobster because curry. this isn't even the most expensive item on it's his gonna be ingredient the truffles. list. Yeah. Models are really prime mushrooms, which I'm hugely fond of. And come summer, British forests are full of models and we have them for us. You can get dried models also that can be cheaper. You can also get bulk produced models, which can be done oh, in a contained environment. Travel. But these are wild. My morals are not spending a thousand dollars on a dish to eat. They are from Okney Island and they are hand dived. To me, these are smaller, but I have had scallops which are as large as my palm. But Those are nice sized scallops. Lobster will take the main plate. A tool sears the scallops, scallops with butter, curry leaves, chili, garlic, and ginger. Then he lets them rest, waiting for the other components. Take a nice nap. to do a thousand pound curry, you've got to use beluga caviar. 
Harvested from the beluga sturgeon, primarily found in the Caspian Sea, beluga caviar is one of the world's most luxurious and sought-after delicacies. In short, that means it's really expensive. This by far is our most expensive ingredient of the of day, and I can't wait to see well, how these rich fish eggs add gold yeah, and caviar. Yeah, totally Personally, I think you ruined the scallop by putting caviar on top of it. The sauce is Chef Atul's pick for the base. It starts with oil, mustard seeds, green curry leaves, green chili, That's and garlic. And I'm not trying to color the garlic, just sweat it, and then chopped onions or chopped shallots, whichever you prefer. A pinch of salt, and once onions are nicely sweat, then you add turmeric, and we have yes, coconut chef. milk here. The authentic moldy recipe is a rich, creamy, mildly spiced fish stew from Kerala, India. You finished There's the berry yet this season? I can no. put up yeah. there and say, this really represents India. The cuisine is quite varied, from north to south, east to west. When I say moily, everybody knows their mind transports them to Kerala. The fish, which is caught on the backwaters or from sea, cooked in moily sauce is called mean moily. But I'm going to call it lobster moily, and I'm using native lobster what we get here, one of the best in the world, in my opinion. Okay, guys, the sauce is ready. I'm just going to plate it now. So this is the curry which we have made. I've just put the lobster in, and I'm going to put one of the scallops. One of the mussels have gone in. I'm just going to give nice slivers of summer truffle at the moment. Beluga caviar Look, we're going to put on top I'm of the sure scallop. I'm sure it's delicious. Something close to a half. This is called monk's beard, which have been tempura. I would never that is a worth for any meal. Pan curry. I'm Lolly? sure it's very it tasty. Cheers. Cheers. Lolly, a mega fan of all things Indian, has visited India seven times. Her YouTube channel features the best of Indian food and culture in London and abroad. Hey, we do it. We would do something with you. Yeah, yeah. This will be her we, first I elevated guess we don't do food curry. Stuff. Well, that looks like caviar. And her first we do caviar. food stuff. This is weird. This We've done a lot of food like stuff. Weird. And Not her like first her. truffle. We've got like a, a lobster What's fishy looking thing. Her first taste of lobster. And a scallop. <gasps> I the guess. Voices. And her first scallop, oh, too. I don't know wow. what the yellow stuff is, though. That, that, well, that would be the curry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think we Never first tasted try lobster or scallop? Itself. Yeah, let's do that. Does her shirt say, oh, it's nice. very good. Mm. Oh, wow. That's really good. That's so nice. Spicy and a ton of coconut milk coming through. It's super rich. That is actually super delicious. I did not expect that. I it could eat a... a huge bowl of that. It's very mellow, though. It's not too spicy. Yeah, but... the spices are well balanced. Let's try next the scallop. Already the caviar and the scallop is a beautiful pairing. They go well together. The scallop is sweet. The caviar is briny, very heavy. But you mix that with this onslaught of spices from the curry. It's really an incredible combination. What do you think? Slimy. Slimy? <laughs> Did you say this is your first scallop? Wow. She's very yeah. British. Huh? Nothing. How old am I? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I forgot. That's rude to ask. I'm 34. You know what's interesting, though? The inverse of that, I was in my younger 30s the first time I ever tried curry. It unlocked a part of my brain. I had to go like we had that exact meal. Part of the map. I was like, I didn't know this flavor combination could exist. It blew my mind, and I love it. Perhaps that will happen to you with, with lobster. With lobster. <laughs> but first, this is the morel mushroom. Oh, that's good. It tastes like steak. Yeah, the texture of it is almost like a beef trike, the cow stomach. Yeah. Yeah, you think so? Well, I've never had cow yeah, I know, stomach. I know but you no, but it, I, I could feel like it's earthy and mm -hmm. meaty. It's really good. At last, we have the lobster. Now, the lobster is not just a lobster. It's also been topped with this right here. This is black truffle. In my opinion, yeah. truffles have a lot better smell than taste. I don't think they have a very profound or strong taste. That's what I would do. Are you, yeah, don't insert it. Smells <laughs> <laughs> like leather. Lesbians hate Very when you nice. smell things. Maybe, I could, actually, yeah. No, I think you're right. This one does actually have a little bit of that kind of leathery smell. They're not all the same. She still calls on me. Mm -hmm. Um, I think maybe I'd been put off lobster because the amount of shrimps I had in Vietnam. You know, they're the massive ones. Yeah. And I had them on a boat and I felt really seasick and mm. it put me off. You gotta get back on the, the boat, so to yeah. speak. <laughs> I think that tastes wonderful. Actually, these are some really potent truffles. Very expensive. I could kind of taste it, but kind of smell it at the same time while it was in my mouth. It's not a strong flavor, but it's something that you kind of like taste almost in your nose than in your mouth. Do you know what I mean? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Putting it looks like it's a, dish, a dish designed to be the most expensive dish you could get, yeah, not necessarily to be the, the most culinary of all things you can eat. As somebody who's traveled so much in delicious. India, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. Very good. There's also I would rather have the Indian food here in London. Run. What do you feel you like some of the differences I'd... are between each place? Because it is different. Give me some for example, have you had chicken tikka masala? I have. So the, what's catered for the British, they're a lot more creamier and basically just a lot more. 
Oh my hey, God. with Priceline VIP family, you can unlock deals five times faster. You don't even have to be an actual family. Well, I'm all for ads, but not every three minutes. It's actually Indian food itself. It's not just about curries. It's about many different things, and it's like much deeper flavors. No spice, and we get it. More complex <laughs> dishes, I'd say. Do you think there's still a place in London for the chicken tikka masala? No. I think soon the tikka masala might be a thing of the past. No so way. even though the chicken tikka masala, it's not my favorite curry ever, but here's why I think it should still but exist. Because the chicken when tikka you masala compare not being British popular food in and Indian food, they're polar opposites. And so with chicken tikka masala, <laughs> yeah, you it gives more people a bridge, I do like a safe harbor, English a breakfast that they were just showing a place with the where beans they can feel oh, safe to good. try Blood something sausage. new. Yes. So they can gently step out of their comfort zone and slowly acclimate to a new different type of cuisine that's wildly different from British food. But if people want to level up at any time, they're welcome to. Yeah, I, I think it's time for people to branch out and find out what real Indian food is. Amen. Is that your real name, Lolly? My real name is Laura, but in India, Laura sounds like Lorda, which basically means penis. Oh no. <laughs> when I introduced myself, when I first went over to India, it didn't go down too well, especially as my surname is Pain. Pun intended. So I was like, hi, in I'm Hindi? penis pain, basically. That's like penis every pain. man's greatest fear. <laughs> wow. Lolly said she's brought me a gift and she wants me to open it on camera. Yeah, it's just so you remember this day forever. Okay, it looks, seems like a picture frame, maybe? Let's see if it's busted or not. Oh, nice. So it says sunny side in Hindi on the top. And yeah, that's like a little caricature of you. Although the curry is a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. So. <laughs> right. Thank that's you. cute. No problem. Do I you think it. it looks like you? Actually, I look like I haven't eaten for a while. <laughs> but the bandana and the full head of hair, I like that part. Yeah. Boom. Today we tried three different curries with three vastly different price tags. But at the end of the day, I must choose one curry that the gave me one. the most bang for my buck. Was it the affordable curry at the Indian YMCA? Yep. Was it the controversial chicken tikka masala it at our second location? Or was it the thousand pound curry that cost over $1,200? Well, my doubt. choice for the curry that gave me the most bang the for $8 my buck. The $8 one was absolutely the YMCA curry. Those yep. are some of the best Indian flavors I've had in a long time. And, and honestly, Doesn't surprise I can't me one bit. how affordable it all was. But what do you guys think? Which curry would you most like to try next that time one. you come the YMCA to London? Anyways, curry. guys, that is it for this video. I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who joined me. First of all, Seema. You can find Seema on Instagram. She's also on TikTok. Follow her, her travels, and her fun food adventures. And also, I want to thank Lolly. You can find Lolly on YouTube as she explores Indian food and culture all around London. I also want to thank all of the chefs and cooks who were part of today video. I had a great time. I hope you did too. Otherwise, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace. Alright, I, I gotta get one of these red buses. Or maybe I'll get in the tube. <laughs> tube. <laughs> yeah, we, well, I've said it for a long time that um, it's very similar to Mexican cuisine in the fact that there's not a lot of high-end restaurants in Indian or Mexican food um, because it doesn't need it. Right. It's the food of the people. Mm -hmm. um, you, the best Mexican food you're probably going to get outside of, you know, going to Mexico is probably the vendors that are on the street here. Or, or the, the for example, for us, Tacos Hell Yeah. It's a <sighs> tiny little place. I love Tacos Hell Yeah. And they've got some of the most glorious little tacos and it's always the same two people in there running the place. We know them all the time. Another really great Mexican place here. It's not a chain. There's only two of them. It's called Salsa and Beer. They're really good. No, I I like the um, the people that set up on like the corners of. The oh yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Or the lot of the lot of the, uh, the food trucks. Yeah, do good stuff. The best. Um, but yeah, some of the best food you're gonna find are the ones that just set up on the street because it feels homey. A lot of the food, it feels. Um, it is homey. Yeah. yeah. Indian food, Mexican food, yeah. are both even though they're very different, they also have a lot of similarities. They are on very similar parts of the equator. So that's probably one of the reasons. Um, one just puts everything in bread. The other eats it with bread. <laughs> very similar. And Johnny has, since she's lived in L.A. and she's now been inundated with Mexican culture here, she just marvels consistently on how similar Mexican culture and Mexican people are to Indian culture and Indian people the in so many similar, ways. Yeah. Family focused, passionate, the sports they like, the food kinds of things that they do. Um, and this is something, I mean, we watch, uh, have you ever watched Somebody Feed Phil on Netflix? No. Great show. It's Phil Rosenthal, the creator and writer of Everybody Loves Raymond. Mm. And it's him going all over the world and doing a, a food show like this. The best thing about Phil is he's just a down-to-earth, normal kind of 
dorky guy mm -hmm. with a heart of gold. He's always given his crew food. He's always doing sweet things and meeting people, and you learn about the places. And man, we I would love to do something like that, to just travel the world and meet people and see their culture and eat their food. I can get better than that. And yeah, I wouldn't, sorry, not spending a thousand bucks on any plate of food. If a company is like, hey, do you want to come in and try a thousand dollar meal and not pay for it? Sure. Yeah, sure, I'll do that. I ain't, I, no way in hell I'm ever paying for a thousand dollar meal. And odds are I'm not going to encourage anybody to buy it. <laughs> so you probably don't want us being your spoke people. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm not going to say, yeah, come spend $1,000 on this meal. Yeah. Um, I can't even think of a food I've eaten that I think is worth $1,000. Of some of the most glorious, delicious things I've ever eaten in my life, no way would I ever ev evaluate it at $1,000 for that plate. Nothing. Nothing ever is. No. That's ridiculous. No. There's so much better things you can do with a thousand bucks. Yeah. And better food you could probably get. Yeah. Like I can go down for the better quality than anything. I can go down to the Carol restaurant here in LA uh, and have some oh, of the yeah. best food I've ever had in my life uh, at that restaurant. If you want to spend even a little bit less, the place we did the food tasting that's not too yep. far down the road. Chennai Tiffin. That has Chennai Tiffin. That, their stuff is magnificent. Yeah. I think most of the best Indian food is all. Uh, much cheaper. Well, the best food, one of the best food trucks, remember that Bollywood food truck I tried? When I was talking with them and I looked at their seasonings and everything, the reason it's so good, it's mom's stuff. Yeah. Mom's seasonings, mom's recipes. I would love, and I think we saw a video once, of a Mexican Indian fusion. Yeah, we did. Like a butter chicken burrito. Yeah. That would be fire. Isn't that, isn't there, is that what the place at the gas station does? I don't remember specifically. Okay. It's something like that. Something like that. I think that fusion would be cool. Stupid Babies in London. What are some places we need to know about that I haven't been covered? It is the national dish, which is absolutely hilarious. And there's a lot of Indians in, in yeah. London. It's absolutely hilarious that London or Brit uh, England, or whatever one the national dish is, curry. Yeah. <laughs> is curry. So not only <laughs> did you do so much colonization, you, just, you also just took somebody else's dish. You just reminded me of something. So <laughs> Peter Peter Alice, who directed uh, Dinner with Friends, has become a really good friend of ours. Uh, if you want to see Peter, watch the episode of Seinfeld with the calzones. He's the guy in the he's the Italian guy making the calzones. Uh, <laughs> he sent us a message because he hasn't been over yet for dinner, and we, we've been telling him he needs to. He's Greek, right? Mm -hmm. But he sent Indrani a message. He said, I tried to cook some Indian food and bought just some basic curry from Trader Joe's last oh, night. Oh, good Lord. It was awful. I think I'll leave the Indian cooking to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, not good. Anyway, it's a great video. Let us know other videos uh, from him or other food videos we can react to down below. Josh!